I'm Carver. I'm Lauren. And we're building a van together. So for a couple months, we've been looking at vans, trying to figure out which van will be the best van for us. We looked at the, the new route, which is, tends to be more expensive. You have to take out a loan, those kind of things. We're in the process of trying to eliminate debt, so that's something that we weren't really too comfortable with doing. So that kind of left us looking in the used category. Um, turns out one Saturday we were supposed to go hiking, but it was raining, so we were laying in bed looking at vans, and we happened to cross one, and it was only about, what was it, an hour away? Maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, so we uh, decided to go take a look at it. We called them. They said, yeah, it's still available, so we went to the bank, got some money out, drove up, looked at the van, had one small issue, it was a fuel leak. Um, the guy, super cool to deal with, said he would get it looked at. So actually, the next day, which was a Sunday, he had a mechanic come and look at the van, fix it. The mechanic called me personally, checked over anything that I wanted him to check over, and said that he had fixed the van. So from there, uh, the guy actually delivered it to us, which was, like I said, about an hour and a half drive. And uh, now we have a uh, 158 wheelbase 04 Dodge Sprinter van that we're building out to adventure in. So what we want to do today is take you through the design process and show you our model that we generated on SketchUp to basically show you what we're thinking and kind of go through the process of how we got to where we are. So kind of starting off, we'll start from the, the front of the van back um, and we start in the cockpit area. One of the first things that we did is uh, we put a new radio in the van because the radio that was in it didn't work, which driving long distances, you got to have some music. Um, but going back from the, the back of the van kind of towards the living area, so you can kind of see in the model here, we've got a bench and a like a sofa slash office area. Um, the front seats will swivel around to it. Um, so essentially, the sofa is kind of an everything area to us. Um, I anticipate the dogs will use it quite a lot. Um, we will use it just to sit at that table because there's really nowhere else to set anything up like our laptops or anything unless we get kind of like some sort of lap desk for the bed area or we sit outside, which we probably will do a lot. Um, the table is going to swivel also. He mentioned that we're going to have the seat swivel in the front. That is, that way the seats can swivel and the table can swivel to it. Yeah, so this post right here will basically be the swivel, so the table will be able to rotate out. And we're thinking about maybe making it like fold in half, kind of. So if you want just a, a small table for two people, you could do that. Or if you wanted to fold it out and put three to four people around it, that would be an option too. The reason it's also all the way to the wall is because we kind of want it to lock in so anything on a swivel won't be moving around as we're driving. Yeah, and the table, when it's fully extended, it's, a, it's four feet long. The bench is four feet long, so having that much weight hanging off the end of one of the uh, like swivel pieces would kind of be a lot. So we figured if we could lock it into the, the shower wall there on the other side, that would kind of keep it in place as we were driving around, going on bumpy back roads and, and those kind of things. And the window is also right behind it, so that just makes for a nice space. Um, we have some storage above it just for like books, um, a lot of hiking books we get, honestly. Um, yeah, we've got the guidebooks, all the, the stuff for figuring out which routes you want to climb, going rock climbing, all that kind of stuff too. I might sneak a candle up there. Um, and then right next to it, is actually where our microwave is going to go. So that has no storage purpose whatsoever. Yeah, so this cabinet right here, we may not have a door there. We haven't decided yet, but like Lauren said, the microwave is going to go behind there. And one thing about the window, we actually are taking out the window that came in the van and we're replacing it with a window that opens so we can get some air moving through. So if you don't, if it's not hot enough where you want to turn the AC on, we can just run the, the max air fan that we're going to put on the roof and get some air moving through the, the van. So I think that about wraps it up on the living space there. Um, we're going to move on to the, the shower area slash bathroom, kind of all in one deal, which is right in this area in our model. And that space is roughly 36 inches long by two feet wide at the bottom. And one thing that we're going to do is use a Nautilus retractable shower door to 
keep a streamlined look on this front face here and to basically not have a door that swings out into the van because uh, space is precious and we don't want to waste any extra space that we don't have to. The other thing that's going to go in the shower is the toilet. There's two different schools of thought there. You can, you can go the composting route or you can go the cassette route or you can plumb in a toilet with a, a black water tank which really don't want to do that because I don't want to have another tank under the van that we have to worry about freezing and draining and you know it's just kind of dirty. <laughs> So I think what we've decided so far is we're going to go with the cassette toilet route. So if we want to empty it, we'll just take it out, empty it, put it back in the shower. And uh, there should be enough room in the shower itself to actually leave the toilet in while you're showering. But if we get to a point where we're like, oh, we're tired of stepping around this toilet, it will be removable so you can take it out, set it next to the shower, and have more room to shower. So essentially for the shower, once we go in, um not only will the door be functional, like he said, but it'll also be a nice look. It won't be closed in like a big wood closet. It'll have a dusted look to it. Um, actually look like a shower. Yeah, Go we definitely, figure. <laughs> definitely don't want to shower inside of a coffin. So um, once you get inside, there will be some tile in there. Um, depending on when we go along this build, depending on how much weight we have left, we may do real tile um, if we're feeling like that might be too risky. We'll probably find some nice stick on tile and um, see where that goes. And we'll make sure that matches um, any other tile elements we have in the van and other places, which will be in the kitchen. Yep. So that kind of moves us over into the bedroom area here. Um, and the bed itself is six feet by six feet. So it's a perfect square. We're out to get a a custom or a piece of foam cut it down to fit because it's not really any normal bed size um, and we're thinking about putting two lights over the bed area another thing we're going to do in the bed area is have basically his and hers closet space on each side so Lauren will have three cabinets and I'll have three cabinets and hopefully we won't have clothes packed in all of them we're going to try to pare down what we need so we have a some more room for some other stuff too. So essentially with the bed, um, obviously most people have it raised and have storage. That way you can access it from the back with the doors. Um, we do plan to do that. There will be some stuff that goes back there that Carver ultimately <laughs> determines. Um, <laughs> yeah, like the, the water tank, the batteries, the water pump, the water heater, pretty much all the, the like the inverter charger, all the uh, the mechanical systems that it takes to make the, the van run and function for everyday life, pretty much. But what we did do is we are going to put a wall in and only have some of that be storage. Um, from the front back, it will be the dog space. For anybody that's not familiar with us that may watch this, we have two rather large golden retrievers. Um, very fluffy, very spoiled. So we want to make sure they're not in our floor space all the time where we're stepping over them, um, that they have a place to go. And also, they don't sleep in our bed, they sleep in their beds, so that's another important thing for us is the bed is for the humans and we want to have a space for them to curl up at night and feel cozy in. So we want to make sure it was big enough for two dogs, not just one, and that they would be just as comfortable as we are. Um, so obviously you can't see it in the model, but we have actually had them lay in that space in real life that we currently have taped out and it's plenty big enough for them and it'll be interesting going through the process of making it cozy and seeing how that goes because it might be kind of dark and closed in, but that's what they like, so. Yeah, both of their crates in our room now have a blanket over them, so it's, it's kind of like their little like burrow den area that they kind of go into when they go to sleep. So we're hoping that they'll like their, their space in the van. And when we actually taped it out on the floor, <laughs> you look at it, and they have pretty much the biggest dedicated space in the van is their space. So you can kind of see where our priorities lie there. Um, also, right next to the bed, um, I would kind of establish this in... Our bedroom area we have another closet this will be shared it's not his or her or anything like that um because it's not that big but it is more of an actual closet it has height to it instead of width 
Um, so there'll be a rack where you can like hang up coats and, and bigger clothes that you don't want to just stuff in a, a cabinet or a drawer, basically. And then there are more drawers under there. Um, some of that may function as clothes, may function as other storage, but it's important to have them for whatever they need to function for. So. Yeah, we tried to incorporate as much storage as we possibly could without like feeling like we're in a really enclosed space. And it just worked out. We had originally planned on putting the refrigerator next to the, the shower, but it turns out the refrigerator we were looking at was actually small enough where we were able to fit it uh, in the kitchen. So I guess that kind of leads us into the kitchen now, right? So the kitchen is probably the other largest dedicated space in the van besides the dog area, honestly. Um, we should specify that all that area by the window is the door. So that will move. There's a window. Um, that's kind of standard on a lot of vans you see. Um, and that little space next to the sink is the only opening we left to enter the van. So we will not be having eight people enter at one time. Um, it's really only big enough for me, Carver, maybe me and a dog, Carver and a dog, but yeah. that's perfectly fine. We needed the space for other stuff, so. Yeah, dimensionally it's about two feet in width, which is much smaller than like any standard hallway in a house, but like Lauren said, it's big enough for us, so that's what matters. And we also like the idea of um, being able to hang at the sink and look out the door, do things like that. Um, we've seen some really awesome vans. Um, obviously, people inspire other people that have dogs and they have sprayers and things like that attached to behind their sink area. And we will definitely have to incorporate things like that because our dogs are messy and they like to play outside. So the fact that our sink sticks out and the door opens will really benefit us in ways to where we can keep them near the door where we can see them and clean them off, keep them leashed. A lot of options where there's cabinet space there where we can keep them close, so. Yeah. So basically, like what I'm saying, when the door opens, it'll reveal the back of this counter, which you can't see in the model, but there'll be like a little inset piece in there that'll have two places for the leashes to clip in and then, like Lauren said, it'll have a sprayer. So we can try to eliminate mud and dirty dogs from coming in the van, but... Also need a very massive rug. Yeah, exactly. And so another thing that's not really in the model is the actual sink fixture itself that will go right here. We're looking at doing one <clears throat> that will you'll be able to turn it on and off from the click of a button so you can try to save water. Because with a, we're looking at maybe like between a 30 and 40 gallon water tank in the back. So between showers and washing the dogs and doing the dishes and all that stuff, we're probably going to have to try to conserve water as much as we can. The other thing that we want in the, the sink is actually to where the nozzle comes out and is a sprayer itself. So you can get to anywhere you need to get to in the sink. Um, and we chose a, a farmhouse style sink. One, because it gives us a little more space because you come out past the countertop. And two, it just kind of goes with the, the flow that we were trying to to achieve with the looks inside the van. So under the sink is a little bit of storage. Um, obviously things you'll have to store there are things that you don't think about but need to go there. Maybe soap, sponges. He is ambitious enough to say he wants a soap dispenser so it doesn't have to be stored anywhere but um, you never know. That's what hardware we find and if it's affordable. Um, we need a place for trash that is not in this space. So we'll have to find a trash can that fits under there. Another thing that we want to try to Catch incorporate all. is a water filtration system. So we don't have to worry so much about cleaning the tanks every week so you don't get bacteria in your water tanks and things like that. So we're looking at doing a water filtration system. And it'll probably have a separate spigot that comes out separate from the, the sink itself. So if you want, filtered drinking water or filtered water to cook with, or like you're not going to boil it, things like that. Um, definitely want a, a clean water source. And if we did come into the situation where we needed to fill the van from like a stream <coughs> or uh, like a body of water, we could do that and still have filtered water to drink. He'll still clean them every week, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> this 
square right here, that's the refrigerator that we were telling you about that we were thinking about putting next to the shower, but it actually fit over here quite nicely. So we're looking at putting it right next to the sink. And then we put a row of uh, cabinets, or uh, sorry, actually drawers, between the stove over here and the refrigerator to try to give like a thermal break. So if the, the stove's running, you're cooking a pizza or something, you don't have the refrigerator trying to keep up because there's a 400 degree stove right next to it kind of thing. Um, another interesting thing that we're trying to do is to make it where the countertop actually will fold up against the backsplash. So if you're not using the range, you get about almost two feet more of counter space for prep work and like if you're pulling stuff out of the refrigerator to get ready to cook, you've got space. And then when you're ready to actually use the, the uh, propane range, you just open up that panel and it will have a little click in uh, retainer on the back of the backsplash and you can start cooking. So we looked at doing like a 12 volt style marine RV fridge. Um, those actually get really expensive really quickly. Um, and we we're already at the phase where for the electrical system we're going to have a decently powerful inverter because we want to be able to run a microwave and we actually make smoothies in the morning with a neutral bullet, that kind of thing. So the inverter is going to be pretty powerful and uh, very efficient, doesn't use much in standby mode. So we decided to save the, it's almost a thousand dollar difference and go with a, just a mini fridge from Lowe's that fits in there. Um, and then as far as the specs on the stove goes, we're looking at a Dometic stainless steel stove that runs on propane. Um, since our van is a diesel van, I did look for a diesel cooktop and diesel oven just to try to eliminate needing propane at all, because we are planning to run a, a S-Bar diesel heater under the front seat, like most people do in these vans. So the stove and maybe the hot water heater are going to be the only propane appliances that we have. And to try to eliminate those and run diesel for both of those, it was going to be crazy expensive. It was going to be like another almost $4,000 to have a diesel hot water heater and a diesel cooktop and range, or an oven. So we opted to go with the cheaper propane appliances. They're a lot more readily available, and uh, I think they'll do the job just fine. And we'll put a 20-pound propane cylinder under the bed and have a vent for it so we don't have to worry about that. And also a carbon monoxide detector with all the, the bells and whistles that'll keep us safe in case there was a leak. And under the stove we have another drawer just like your normal oven and stove um, at home which I don't even think you specified that was an oven too but yeah it's an oven it's big enough to cook your, your normal frozen pizza. I guess that makes pizza. sense but yeah pizza is very important to me so it needs to be big enough for pizza um, even though the freezer might not be but we can pop in and get a pizza for that night. Um, the, fridge, the fridge does have a dedicated freezer space though, so we will be able to store some pizzas. Not big pizzas. <laughs> um, there's storage under the oven, um, just like any other oven, so we can put like cookie platters. Um, as I said, pizza is important, so the pizza platters. So we're thinking that between these drawers here and the cabinet under the sink, and we also have cabinet space above. It's two, I believe they're 20 inch long cabinets that are up here. We should have plenty of space for like spices and <clears throat> all the things that make a kitchen complete. So if we wanna take a trip in the van, just hop in, everything's already there and we're good to go. And just for regular kitchen looks, um, when I mentioned earlier that we wanted the tile in the shower to match the tile in the kitchen, all that is over here, and that's basically anything from that door over is going to be the backsplash area. Um, just from a design eye standpoint, it kind of breaks things up. Um, it's a small space. You don't want, well, I mean, it's all preference, but I don't want everything to look exactly the same, all wood. Um, I want a little bit of home elements included, so some color, things like that. Yeah, and that's one thing that we've kind of struggled with during the design actually is, you know, you try to break it up into these separate spaces that you feel like, oh, you're in the bathroom, oh, you're in the kitchen. But when you're working in a space that's like seven feet wide by 14 feet long, it's really difficult because it, it all has to tie in together to some point to make it kind of flow throughout the van. It's like in a traditional house, you can just close the bedroom door and okay, if you got it decorated differently, it really doesn't matter. But in here, everything has to, to play well together and be in the same wheelhouse. And that's one thing we've 
played with back and forth of having black cabinets and white walls, but to get all of it, like the couch cushion color, and Lauren can talk about this a lot better than I can, but trying to get all that to play together, I think we initially ended up deciding that we want to go with white, so. Yeah, I've seen a lot of white vans and they're pretty, but it wasn't in my first wheelhouse of designs. Um, but now I see why everyone's done them. It's easy. It looks good. Um, everything matches. Whatever bedding you put on, whatever backsplash you do, whatever couch cushion, whatever counters you do, literally anything you do um, matches. Um, and also there's, you know, the matter of light. Um, we will be installing lights, obviously, but even with those lights up there and the windows, things like that, um, with black, you just won't have that same open space as you would with white. It would be a lot darker. Could be depressing. You never know. What if it's raining? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah you, you want to be closed up inside of a black space so. and just like, oh, I want to get outside. So kind of talking about the lighting for a minute, we're looking at doing five LED lights in the ceiling that are going to be dimmable. Um, and the two squares you see here, this will be the rooftop air conditioner, and this will be a um, max air fan. So if it's cold enough, we can run the AC. Um, yes, we know we can't run the AC forever off of our battery bank. We're looking now at doing maybe like a 400 amp hour bank and really only running the AC if we're plugged in somewhere. But I am gonna leave enough space to where if we wanna double the size of the battery bank, we could do that to potentially run the AC for, I don't know, a portion of the day. Like if we're in there for eating lunch, we could turn it on and cool the van off kind of thing. Um, but hopefully the max air fan will give enough airflow that we won't really need to run the AC that often. It's just something like if we're down in Florida doing the, the Everglades and we wanna get inside and escape the heat for a little bit, we really wanted to have that option available to us. And the other thing about uh, getting airflow through the van, we talked about the fact that the window behind the sofa area opens. There's also the two rear door windows and we knocked out the factory windows and we're actually putting in half sliders in both of the back doors. So they'll be able to open up pretty much half of the window will be open when they're fully open. So when we're sleeping we'll have a good bit of airflow that comes over us and out the the max air fan that's right here. And another reason we chose to put the max air fan in this location is because of the shower. So if you're showering and there's a lot of steam and moisture coming from the shower, which the kind of showers we're going to be taking, there's not going to be much of it, but there will still be some of it. So we want to have a place for that to get sucked out. And also it's, it's right above the kitchen. So like if you're cooking bacon or doing something on the stove, you got a way to, to get some air moving through there. The van's getting some body work done to it. And we're hoping to get that finished up and we're anxious to get the van back so we can get started on the build. Um, gotta fur out the walls, get some spray foam put down, run some of our electrical, and then uh, we'll start creating everything that you see here. So if you've built a van, know someone that's built a van, never had anything to do with a van, but have a good idea, we want to hear it all. We want to get your comments, we want to get your feedback, we want to see if there's any way that we can make our van build better. Um, if, if you simply just like what we're doing, we like those kind of comments too. Um, any, any type of feedback, we welcome. And if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to follow along with the van build, please subscribe to the channel. We'll post videos as, as often as we can with the updates of what we're working on on that particular video.